Hey, what's happening guys? Today we are going to talk about oscilloscopes again, and in this particular case we're going to talk about triggering. Um, the trigger system is used to look at stable waveforms. If you're not properly triggered, this is what you end up with. A waveform that just rolls across the screen, and it's basically impossible to read it and get any measurements. The trigger system lets you set a point in the signal and then begin the capture at that point. So basically, it allows you to sync your scope to your signal. So what we have here is an untriggered sine wave. But if I bring our trigger, and that's this little yellow triangle here, down into some point within the waveform, you see how we now have a stable waveform. And there are a lot of different trigger methods. If we press the trigger menu button on the scope, you can see we can trigger, as we're doing in this case, by edge, a video trigger, a pulse trigger, a slope trigger, overtime trigger, or an alternate trigger. Now, in this case, we're just going to stick to the edge trigger, and we're also going to talk about the pulse trigger later on in the video. So what the edge trigger means is that we are triggering the scope to begin recording, and that's this little blue icon here. This is the trigger point. So where it intersects our signal is where it is beginning to record. Since it is right in the middle, this is pre-trigger data, and this is post-trigger data. And in fact, if I press the Run Stop button on the scope, and you see now we're stopped, a little red dot there, we're not triggering, and I move the horizontal position knob, we are seeing more of the pre-trigger, and you can see it's 274 microseconds. And that also works. Oops, that's the wrong one. And that also works in this direction. So we are now seeing 118 microseconds after the trigger. And you can see where it stops. So if I press this button, we're now back there. And I'm going to press the Run Stop button. So we are now triggering on this signal. Now, most modern scopes can trigger in the edge mode on either a rising or a falling edge. So right now we're triggering on the rising edge and you can see right here where our intersection point is is on the rising edge of this signal. And if I switch to the falling edge, you can now see it is on the falling edge and we are triggering on a voltage point. So if you look here, when I adjust the trigger level, we are triggering there at 12.4 volts. And we can come down here and actually trigger on zero volts because this is, of course, an AC waveform. But that's telling you what we're getting here. So this works equally well with square waves, triangle waves, what other kind of wave you're looking at. So this is edge triggering on a rising or falling scope. Slope. <laughs> now, what's happening also is that we have two different modes, auto and normal. We are in the auto mode. And what that means is that the scope will trigger even when it's not in a triggering setting. So again, here is our trigger point and you can see it is at 8.4 volts. I'm gonna move the trigger level outside and you can see we are still triggering. But if I switch this over to normal mode, it simply stays on the last waveform that was on the screen and it does not trigger you can see we're not triggering here until the signal falls within the realm of the waveform.
now we're triggering because our trigger level is back inside the realm of the waveform. So that is edge triggering. Next, we'll talk about pulse triggering. All right, pulse triggering. We're looking at a square wave here. And you can see it's not triggered. Now, of course, we can say we can uh, trigger this with edge triggering as well. We're triggering on the rising edge and we're trigger point. Our trigger point is right here. So that's our pre-trigger data and our post-trigger data. But another way we can trigger is on the width of these pulses. So I've got a little variable pulse width generator here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set ourselves a pulse width. And we're going to use this pulse width here to start with. So I'm going to stop the scope. I'm going to bring up the cursor menu. We're going to measure time. Oops, sorry to bump the camera there. So the width of this pulse is, geez, I keep bumping the camera. I apologize. The width of, the width of this pulse is 160 milliseconds. So let's turn that off. Now we know the width of the pulse. And we'll turn the thing back on here. And bring up the trigger menu and we're going to select pulse triggering. We're going to trigger on channel one and we're going to trigger on a, on a positive pulse. So I'm going to bring up page two here where we can select whether we're going to trigger when the pulse width is equal to, not equal to, greater than or less than the pulse width. So we're going to trigger on a pulse width that is less than what we had in our pulse width there. Gee, I should have picked greater than, huh? Bear with me. All right, we'll, we'll adjust it this way. So we're now triggering when our pulse width is less than 210 microseconds. So if I adjust our pulse to get smaller, whoops, that's larger. No, nope, that's smaller. You can see, whoops. You can see now that we are triggered because the little T is up. I'm just going to bring this position down here so we can see. And if we bring up our measurement window, we can see that our pulse width is 48 microseconds. So we're triggering on that pulse width. Now let's change this again and bring up our trigger menu. And let's go greater than 48 microseconds. So we'll bring this down to 48 microseconds. Okay. And if I bring our pulse width up, you can see we are now solidly triggered. So that gives you two ways to trigger your scope. I hope this helps you out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up, comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'm out.